towards him and make this declaration tonight that we're still going to believe. Come on, it doesn't matter what this year brought you. It doesn't matter what you're even facing right now. Somebody needs to know that you can still believe. Come on, in the face of the immovable, in the face of the unbreakable, I want you to know that you can still trust a God who is more than able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or even think. Somebody needs to know you can still believe for it in the name of Jesus. When there seems to be no way. Come on, he's making ways in the wilderness tonight. You are the way when there seems to be no way. We trust in you, God, you have the final say. You are the way when there seems to be no way. We trust in you. working in this place right now. Come on, could we let the Lord move right now? Somebody needs to get it in their spirit that you can still believe. Somebody's had a rough 2021, but we're letting the devil know, I still believe. I still believe he can heal. I still believe he can deliver. I still believe he can mend the broken hearted. He this place come on he said it so we can believe it tonight
if you believe, would you clap your hands unto Jesus tonight? We still believe, Lord, we still believe. We still believe, Lord, we still believe. I wonder if just for another moment, with no music, no words, we could begin to worship the King of Kings. All across this place, could we give Him some worship tonight? God, we're so thankful for what we feel in this place. feels the presence of the Lord so strongly in this place come on clap your hands if you feel what I feel tonight hallelujah 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 I personally believe that a song like that brother Howard to end this year and go into the next is one of the biggest in-your-face devil moments we could have at this congregation. Because we're letting all of hell know that despite the heartbreak of 2021, despite all the setbacks and letdowns, despite all the prayers that went unanswered, we're letting hell know we still believe. We still believe. We still believe. If that's you, why don't you give a shout of praise and let them know we still believe in Middletown that he is able to heal, to deliver, to set the captives free. I'll be honest, I'm a little biased because I'm kind of used to this, Brother Bobby. But you can keep your partying in the new year. I wouldn't trade this for nothing in this world. Come on, they can have the parties and, and wake up feeling bad, but we can experience the glory of Almighty God in this place. Give me Jesus. Give me the glory. Give me the power of God on New Year's Eve. I say praise the Lord man the presence of the Lord is here Ugh. I've got a few announcements to make I think we're going to uh, I think we're going to wait till the end sister Amanda if that's okay alright Acts chapter 2 Starting in verse 42 through 47. Hope you guys had a wonderful day today. I know it's a time of reflection. I was uh, spending time in preparation for tonight and kind of got to thinking about the last year. I was actually at Pastor's favorite place. It was the Starbucks at Liberty Center. And so... It just in case you guys need any gift ideas for his birthday in February, Pastor loves Starbucks. 
So you can get him a bunch of gift cards for that. I'm just kidding. Don't do that. Don't do that. Acts chapter 2, starting in verse 42. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship and the, the breaking of bread and the prayers and all came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. They were selling their possessions and belonging and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, everybody say day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. Tonight I want to talk for just a few moments, um, kind of a silly title. We're going to call it 3D Church. 3D Church. Would you pray with me? Thank you, Jesus, for what we feel in this place tonight. You're so awesome. Thank you for letting your spirit be here. I pray, God, that you would anoint your message. Lord, I pray that you would, your word would go forth tonight anointed and not return void but accomplish whatsoever you desire to accomplish in this place tonight. I pray, God, that we wouldn't just be stirred, but we would be changed and transformed by the power that is in the Word of God. We thank you for 2021, and we look forward to 2022. Have your way in this service tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Everyone said amen. Would you give the Lord one more hand clap of praise tonight as you're being seated? A little bit earlier, I had stumbled upon a, a podcast, and the topic was talking about the trajectory of the North American church, and it should come to no surprise that many congregations have seen their attendance down as they navigate the complexities of this ongoing pandemic. But what I was struck as they read the statistics they begin to talk about how these numbers were actually taken right before COVID-19 kind of impacted all of our lives. And so uh, that was startling because uh, they had surveyed about 15,000 churches in North America. And across denomination lines, it says that church membership is down among all demographics. And so the boomer generation sits at the highest at 66%. Next is genera Generation X, and it stands at 50%. And the last statistic they gave was the Millennial Generation, which was down to 36%. Now, now think about this statistic, because these are people that consider themselves members. Doesn't mean they attend regularly church services. Doesn't mean that they're active in their local congregation doesn't mean that their lives reflect so-called Christian conversion. just means that they consider themselves a member of a church. One professor comments, It is very clear Americans' attachment to institutional religion is on the decline. He adds, in 30 years, the United States won't have one dominant religion. And I give these statistics tonight not to talk about how bad society is. Not offering these numbers so that we can bash the world and all of the sin and chaos which accompany it. It's the world. It's supposed to be bad. They live without hope in the transforming power of Jesus Christ. But here's the exciting news as we look into 2022. We have the answer. And here's more. We don't just have the answer. We are the answer. 
So in a world that's spiraling further away from the goodness of God, let there be a group of apostolic Pentecostals in Middletown, Ohio that say you've tried religion, but have you experienced the power of the Holy Ghost? You've dabbled in consumer Christianity, but have you ever experienced the liberating moments where your sins are washed away in baptism as you go down in the only saving name of Jesus Christ for all the woes in the world we still have the greatest hope in the world this is not an abstract idea This is not a mere concept of hope. It's not a utopian wishful thinking. This hope has a name. And his name is Jesus. And he came to set the captives free. He came so that the blind could see. The deaf could hear. The lame could walk. But most importantly, he came so his blood could be shed. To cover the sins of a whole world. I'm so thankful I have a world of hope in a world that does have no hope. I'm so thankful that I can reach out to Jesus who is the author and the finisher of my faith. We are not hopeless. But what if I told you that despite the decline in the North American church the answer is 3D church. How crazy would it be if I suggested that even the New Testament church had 3D church. You can see some of you now wanting to get your phones out and start Googling when was 3D invented. I'm not, obviously, I'm not referring to when you come inside, we have the ushers hand you some goggles and you just take your seat and put them on and enjoy the show. <clears throat> Rather, I'm referring to the 3Ds we're going to focus on in 2022. The 3Ds are these. Devotion, doctrine, and discipleship. See, the church had just experienced an outpouring of exponential proportions on the day of Pentecost. To think these 120 followers of a crucified convict shut themselves up in a Jerusalem upper room. What were they doing? What were they waiting for? Are they hiding They secluding, withdrawing themselves from society. One could imagine a gathering of that size would have drawn at least slight attention from the travelers in town for the festivities of Pentecost. But those inside the upper room weren't there for a feast. They were there for a fire. And we read the unfolding events in the second chapter of the book of Acts and it feels almost fictional. We stand in awe at the outpouring of the upper room as it spilled into the streets. Scripture records some 3,000 experienced that same outpouring that the original 120 did after following the words of Jesus. Tarry in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Think about the promise and then consider the preliminary effort required to receive it. I want you to go and pray until something happens. See, the honest truth, if we're all reflecting, is sometimes we struggle to pray 15 minutes at a time. We got all these activities and all these busy schedules and calendars and scrolling through Facebook to do. But Jesus wasn't looking for pretender disciples. He wanted the real thing. He wanted the dedicated that would say, I I don't care what's on the calendar. Let's do what Jesus said. We're going to Jerusalem. And we're going to stay there until something happens. And I just wonder what would happen in your life and in my life over the next 21 days of prayer and fasting if you made that proclamation. I don't care what's on the calendar. I've got to hear from God. I don't care what's going on in the world. I'm going to go into my own upper room. 
And I'm not just going to stay until a few tears fall. I'm not just staying until I get the Holy Ghost goosebumps. I'm not staying until I speak in tongues for a little while. No, 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 friend. I'm going to pray and I'm going to fast until I see chains broken in the lives of my family. I'm praying until I get my answer or my peace. I'm fasting until that child comes home. I'm fasting until they start asking questions. I'm fasting until that spouse says, Says, honey, what time's church start? I'm going with you this Sunday. We got to start praying and fasting until something transpires. I'm not talking about hype, sensationalism. But there are some things that only take place when you get determined to obtain the promise from the Father. So I want to notice the key ingredients to this book of Acts revival. First, it consisted of devotion. They prayed and they prayed and they prayed. And then suddenly. We want the suddenly without the praying. Then they had doctrine. Somebody says, well, you can believe what you want to believe. I, I don't believe that's apostolic. Because Peter said unto them when they started asking questions on that day. What do we got to do to be saved? He said, you've got to repent and be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. It's for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Peter didn't get up and say, just come to Jesus. He didn't just say, let him in your heart. He didn't just say, accept the free gift. He said, no, with boldness under the unction of the Holy Ghost. He said, you've got to repent. You've got to turn from your wicked ways. You've got to leave this whole world behind. He said, be baptized, which means you got to go under, totally under, in the only saving name of Jesus. He said, you got to receive the Holy Ghost just like the 120 did. We need to stare 2022 in the face and say, the message has not changed. Come on, we got to thank God for the revelation of knowing except a man be born of the water and spirit. He cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Somebody needs to thank God for the message of the new birth. If you've been born again, if you've ever received the gift of the Holy Ghost, if you've ever been baptized in the name of Jesus, why don't you let hell know the message has not changed. They had devotion, they had doctrine, and finally the church had discipleship because they allowed the Spirit to spill out into the streets. There was a boldness inside of them that wasn't intimidated any longer. Think about it. These were men and women associated with Jesus of Nazareth. In the eyes of most of Jerusalem, these were heretics of the highest order. They had been shut in. Lying low for fear of their life. But when you experience the power of the Holy Ghost. There's something that takes place. And you just got to tell somebody. You start talking to the waitress at Frisch's. You're holding up the line at Fifth Third. Telling your favorite teller. Look what the Lord has done. There's a desire in you to start sharing. Exactly what God has done in your life. And because they didn't keep their little Pentecostal church service confined to the building, nearly 3,000 people experienced the same power. And guess what? They didn't get the Holy Ghost inside of a church building. Woo! Feel the Holy Ghost. They were out there in the streets. These folks that were making fun of them just a few moments ago. Saying you're a bunch of lunatics. You need to stop drinking so early. You need to get your act together. All of a sudden they started feeling the power of God. And then the spirit took over. I wonder what would happen if we understood that church can happen outside of these walls. We're not restricted to, to Sunday at 10 and 6.30 and Wednesday at 7. 
seven, but church can happen in the grocery store. It can happen at your job. It can happen wherever. Here's what I love, though, about Acts. Because it doesn't just show us how the revival arrived. It talks about how it continued. See, I don't, I, I don't just want a moment of revival. I want to reside in revival. I want that everyday revival. I want revival in my home. I want revival in my family. I want revival at my job. And I want revival at my church. And this is where we see the first steps of the New Testament church. Because in our opening text, we read that the day of Pentecost was only the beginning. You see, many people, this is just kind of a side note, many people believe that the Holy Ghost outpouring with the evidence of speaking in tongues was just for that day. That God stopped after the day of Pentecost, Brother Doug. That's what they believe. Had conversations about it. But it's just kind of, it's just weird to me though because I'm, I just want them to keep reading. I, I'm kind of a smart aleck. I can't help it. I've got the Holy Ghost, but I'm trying. <clears throat> See, because Acts 2.39 says, For the promise is for you and for your children and for who all are afar off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. Which is really hard to believe that God would restrict it to just that day if he's talking about future generations and those not even in the same geographical location. I'm glad to know 2,000 years later that the promise was not just for them. Come on, the Pentecostal promise still remains today. It's not about a denomination. It's about the Word of God. It's true. It still stands. And it's for you. Somebody say, it's for me. Verse 42 says, And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. There was a devotional element to their life. Quite literally, they were devoted to devotion. They, they possessed an uncompromising commitment to prayer. This is the key. They understood that what started with prayer could only be maintained with prayer. I just want to I want to slow down and just be very concise with what I'm trying to communicate here. We know we need proper strategies. We need to coordinate and we need to plan and we need to be effective and we need to start the right programs. But may we never be fooled into believing that programs, planning, and personalities will ever carry the same impact as prayer. See, Paul called the Galatians foolish. One indictment that he said was, you allowed the flesh to take over. He said, having started in the spirit, will you now be perfected by the flesh? I know what he's talking about there. He's talking about the Old Testament law of Moses, but the principle still stands. This thing started in the spirit. and We can't be fooled into thinking we can program our way into revival. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Revival is only sustained through old-fashioned prayer, old-fashioned fasting, old-fashioned devotion to Jesus in Him alone. Verse 43, And all came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. How many still believe miracles, signs, and wonders are for the church today? Verse 44, and all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings. And distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. There was a unity that came from true revival. Because true revival requires true unity. None of that fake stuff. The real deal. Is a unity that accompanies the Spirit when we begin to allow the Lord to heal our hearts and allow true forgiveness to take place. Verse 46, And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all people. I believe God's going to give us favor in this hour. 
He's going to give us favor with our coworkers. With our fam- I'm telling you, I feel it in the Holy Ghost. There's family members right now that would blow your mind who God wants to reach through you. That if God, if God revealed to them to you right now, you'd be like, nah. I'm serious. I feel that. There are family members in our lives that are depending upon us to get to a place of prayer and fasting where we say this is the year. This is the moment that I'm going to see that loved one that I never dreamed of. This is the year. We're not waiting any longer. We're not sitting on the sidelines. But we're going to see God move in 2022. Love that last verse. Our text tonight, Lord added to their number day by day. They were going to the temple. They were going to each other's houses. They were eating meals, enjoying one another's company, viewing one another as the family of God. You know, it might, it might sound cheesy or cliche, but, but we are the family of God. Did you know that, it's kind of kind of odd, Brother Howard, but I was listening, they were talking about how early Christians were actually accused of incest because they couldn't understand why they were calling each other brother and sister. Seriously, this is a Roman that, that accuses it. Plenty of the younger, go look at they And they accused them of incest because brother and sister, but you're, you guys are married. It's kind of weird, right? But, but they were the family of God. And we've got to change our perspective. We don't just go to church together and kind of just, hey, how's it going? We're family. We're family. And that's what we need in 2022 is an understanding that, you know, a lot of our problems would be solved if we, if we just had an understanding we're all on the same team. We're all just trying to make it to heaven. All just want to see each other make it to heaven. I want to go. I want you to go. And so, and so our problems start to seem a little bit smaller with people when we realize we're both just trying to make it to heaven. Life's hard enough as it is. We don't need to be making enemies with the people that's supposed to be on our team. Is that all right tonight? Lord added to their number daily. I believe that's the will of God. If you'll help me out tonight, Sister Amanda, I'm, I'm closing. If we could stand. I believe the will of God is for, is for people to be added to the church daily. Baptisms on an off night. I love that. I love when people get baptized on a Monday night, on a Saturday afternoon. I love that. Because I'm like, that's if if the apostles could see that, they'd be like, that's apostolic. That's what we were talking about. This year we're starting with 21 days of prayer and fasting. And so uh, we're carving out some time to corporately join together and establish some good daily principles here. And I kind of want to announce just a couple things uh, that we're doing as we prepare to, uh, Pastor prepares to come. We're going to have uh, fasting starting on Monday. <clears throat> and so we're asking that everybody participate somehow. Okay. So. We understand that some people, for, for medical reasons, for dietary reasons, if you can't fast uh, food for the day, we, we get all that. So we, we're going to pass out a few options that we think would be helpful. So if you want to fast, if you want to do the Daniel's fast, they have uh, all, all sorts of recipes online. You can do the Daniel's fast. Um, if you just want to fast one meal per day, then, then pick, a, pick a time and do that. <clears throat> if you want to fast from lunch to lunch, dinner to dinner. Um, you want to pick uh, the same days. We want to. Here's what we want to try and do. We've got a sign up sheet in the vestibule. If you'll if you'll be so kind to to pick your days now, so we can kind of get it all covered. Because we want every day of the 21 days to be covered by somebody that is praying and fasting. And so we're going to pass all these out. We we're also doing something a little bit different this year. <clears throat> we're going to do a 21 days. We're going to do a Bible reading plan. For the 21 days. And so they're going to pass that out, out as well. We're working through uh, the book of Acts, Romans, and 1 Peter. Uh, so I mean, it, it breaks down to two to three chapters a day, uh, which we thought was pretty manageable. And I'm hoping that we all can kind of participate. And we'll probably do some recapping on that 
um, as well. So I'm really excited. <clears throat> I'm really excited about that. And from the discipleship front, um, this is just a small, small element of it. But but we've got these cards. I don't know if you're able, Sister Megan. Yeah, we got these cards here that you can pass out. And on the back it says, uh, sit with me at church this week. Um, which is pretty cool. So you can put your name and number if you meet somebody and they're interested. You can leave this at the restaurant table, wherever you're at, the coffee shop, and you can invite them uh, to come sit with you. Because some people, they want to come to church, but they don't want to be alone because they don't know nobody. And you can be like, no, don't worry about it. You can sit with me. So I thought that was a really cool idea. Amen. I'm, I'm really excited about uh, communion tonight. So pastor's getting ready to come. But uh, I wonder, <clears throat> as he gets ready to come, if we could just, uh, if we could just pray and ask the Lord to kind of uh, help us to receive uh, the three D's into our spirit. Could we do that? Lord, help me align myself to the vision of the local church. I don't want to be a spectator, but I want to participate. I want to grow in you. I, I don't want just head knowledge, but I want deep adoration and devotion to you. Help me to be a disciple maker. Let me walk with you daily. Let me be a light in this dark world. God, I pray that you would allow me to have that boldness to go and to reach for those who need you. I'm praying, Jesus, that you would transform our hearts and our minds and help us, Lord, as we move into this new year. Thank you for all that you've done and all that you're going to do. We thank you in advance in the mighty name of Jesus.